So hi everyone, uh, we're going to speak about the errors in certificates. Uh, this is my PhD uh, and the bachelor thesis of uh, Pavel, uh, and we are from Masaryk University in Brno, and it's done in cooperation with Red Hat. Certificates are basically ubiquitous today. Basically, whatever site you see, including the DEFCOM website, is secured, TLS certificates are in place. So even if you don't handle certificates daily, you've definitely met certificates and you've, you, you've worked with them. And usually it's the case that everything is okay, like the website displayed, but sometimes you get across something like this. Uh, there's a problem with the certificates, which you uh, may or may not understand, depending on your level of proficiency on Oh, and on the website that you are connecting to, whether you know that there should be a problem or it should be okay, but it's suddenly not. Uh, more often, from your positions, you will not uh, see certificate errors like these, but uh, done in command line interface. So imagine we need to verify a certificate. That happens once in a while. You're testing a system, you're a QA or a tester, uh, or the system just crashed and you have, you've got a certificate and you are kind of suspicious that the certificate is to blame. Uh, so we want to check the certificate yourself. So we have a cert that we want to verify. If we try to do that simple as that, command line, we may get something like this. Error 34 at zero depth lookup, unhandled critical extension. I mean, if you're handling certificates daily, you probably know at this point what's going on, but more probably uh, you don't have a clue. So what you do, copy and paste, you go to Google, OpenSSL, unhandled critical extension, you get to the OpenSSL documentation and you learn unhandled critical extension. Well, thank you, documentation. Uh, it can be better, it can be worse. Uh, OpenSSL is definitely not the only one to blame. Uh, and the guys at OpenSSL are, are really trying and they've improved stuff on their own and on our prompts. And if we start picking other documentations, we also find other funny stuff. In GNU TLS, you can learn that the certificate presented isn't the one expected and then it mentions tofu, <laughs> though it probably isn't the one tofu that, you came, that came to your mind at the beginning. And the thing is that there's quite a lot of errors that can happen just when validating a single certificate. This is a list from the OpenSSL manual page and it's not like complete. If we went further on, it would end somewhere like over here but I was just unwilling to go with a smaller font because then you would have no idea what the errors looked like. Uh, you might think that, well, certificates doesn't matter that much. Well, it does. Uh, recently, you might have noticed there was a CVE for a Microsoft error uh, because a product of the Microsoft Crypto API was validating elliptic curve certificates in a slightly uh, incorrect way. And the slightly incorrect meant that if you delicately crafted the certificate, you were able to create a certificate officially trusted by, by the Microsoft API on whatever you liked. And the example shows basically you can do ransomware that's digitally officially signed by Microsoft and Windows totally accepts that. So validating certificates gets kind of crucial at times and we should really be able to get it right. Now, we don't want to just, just keep, keep complaining about all the things that Martin has just said. So we decided, uh, why not improve the situation uh, and make it better, make it more usable. Uh, so the ob obvious way to make it better would be to make some pull requests to the, to the official documentations, uh, to keep adding the, the missing documentation uh, and we agreed with, with that, 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 that's the obvious way, but uh, we decided a bit different approach. Uh, you may have seen our booth here at DEF CONF, and we have created a website called x509errors.org, uh, and it was actually, uh, you could actually see it here at DEF CONF, at our booth. So, what's it about? Uh, we decided to list, uh, we, we decided to create a web page that lists all the possible certificate validation errors uh, across different libraries and, and make websites to, to create a documentation that could be more usable for all. So we, ne we needed something to base it upon. So we, t we took all OpenSSL certificate validation errors and because OpenSSL is 
by far the most widely used uh, open TLS library today. Uh, so we based it on it. And then we split the, the error messages into a few different categories. So for example, one category could be the trust or chain related errors. Uh, each category has some description. For example, trust or chain related errors are errors that happen when the, when, when the building of the chain up to the root fell somewhere. Uh, so you can find this description here with the category. Also some relevant links to some useful resources such as RFCs. Uh, and then you get to the specific errors. So when you click on a specific error, uh, you get some detailed information about it. Uh, what we managed to do is that for many of the OpenSSL errors, we've created an, an example certificate, uh, which means that uh, we replicated the error message in such a way that we have a certificate that, or better said, a certificate chain that upon validation uh, gives exactly the one error that we want. Uh, and that can help you as a developer for testing purposes, but it also helps us because when we have this error and this certificate that gives uh, this error upon validation, we can use it to uh, run validation in different libraries and see what error messages are equivalent to this one error message in, in different libraries like NTLS, Bolton, NSS, and so on. Uh, and so we started mapping uh, together uh, the error messages from these libraries to see what are the equivalents. Uh, to help us do that, we created a, a table like this. We call it a mapping table. And uh, on the most, most left column, you see the list of all OpenSSL errors. Uh, now, the ones that are green mean that we have already managed to replicate these ones. So that means that we have the example certificate for them. And we can compare it to the other, other libraries. Uh, now, the other columns represent other different libraries. And when the, the, the error message is green, that means that we've successfully managed to, uh, to map the error message to its equivalent in OpenSSL. <coughs> now, uh, from this graph, you can see a few things. The first thing is that we st still have a lot of work to do. Uh, we've managed to map almost the half, uh, we've managed to replicate almost the half of the OpenSSL errors. There is currently uh, around 70, 77 errors in OpenSSL. Uh, around 10 of those are marked as deprecated in the official documentation, so they can't really happen. Uh, and we suspect that there are still a few of, of the errors that are not marked deprecated, but we suspect that they can't really occur in the wild. In the wild. So we are more like close to the two thirds uh, with the green line. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree that th there's still a lot of work to do. Now the second thing you can see in here that there is a massive difference between the total amount of, amount of errors uh, among, between the different, different libraries so, for instance, in GNU TLS, there is uh, like a quarter of, of the amount of the er errors as compared to the OpenSSL, uh, which will mean two things. Either GNU TLS doesn't do that much of a control. For, for example, it doesn't control all the things that OpenSSL does. So that might be one issue. Uh, or the second thing could be that uh, OpenSSL has a differentiates between these errors like uh, much in a much finer grain. So uh, like more OpenSSL errors could be mapped against one GNU TLS error. Uh, anyway, we are still improving on this and we are ad uh, adding new libraries like NSS, embed TLS and so on. And yeah, and this, okay. Now back to the scenario that Martin has started. Uh, you are at, you, are, you found yourself in a, some documentation. It doesn't matter what library it is, but it doesn't help you much. So imagine an alternate world where there will be another one line in the documentation linking you to some website. Uh, you click on it and you find yourself somewhere here. And there's a detailed explanation of what the error message means and what should you do. 
Now, this might not only help you as a developer, but it might also help the developers of the, the TLS libraries themselves because they don't have to write the documentations them, themselves. Now, but what else should, the, should such a web page uh, contain for, for the developer to, to find it usable? Basically, going for the next steps that we are planning, of course, the obvious one is to, uh, when their website is presentable and contains enough information, to reach back to the developers of the libraries and offer them, oh, we've tried to comprehend all the do documentation and map them together, and we see that uh, GNU TLS has a good bit in their documentation on unhandled critical extension, uh, and we would like to add that to your documentation, and basically, in an ideal world, of course, uh, kind of unify the system. Uh, the pity is that the changes would be compatibility breaking, but imagine the world where, where all the libraries would give you this very same uh, certificate error messages, so no matter what library you are using, you just know the errors, even if you switched from the previous one, which is actually something that uh, we plan to do. We would be reaching to the developers of OpenSSL, GNU TLS, NSS, uh, roughly in February. I've already talked with the main developer of GNU TLS, and uh, we've communicated with the OpenSSL guy previously uh, and in the meantime to improve the website we are adding more libraries as Pavel said adding uh, more uh, example certificates other than that in parallel we are trying to get some sort of a statistics for the individual errors uh, running a running an analysis of the IPv4 scan basically all the certificates that you can reasonably get uh, looking at the internet, uh, things like census data sets and rapid seven scans uh, to find out how frequent these errors are because as you've seen, OpenSSL has a lot of them compared to let's say GNU TLS. And maybe some of them really do occur often and those are the ones where focusing on them would be uh, a priority. And maybe you find others that, that occur almost never. Uh, at which point the, the sheer volume of the number of errors might be confusing. So maybe if we have similar errors that never occur or almost never, we could merge them into something that occurs a little more often and does not create the volume of about 80 different error messages that you need to understand if something happens. So this is a point that we want to add to add some sort of a <laughs> statistical dimension to how much this happens in the wild. A second thing, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, we would like to create a better documentation uh, for the individual errors because it's still uh, better to have one thing that tells you what's the problem, what should you do, what are the security consequences uh, directly instead of having the six one, uh, two liners of the existing documentations that we are compiling uh, at the moment on the single place. Though that is also an improvement uh, from the uh, current state of the, of the, of the world. Uh, we would like to post this better documentation just on the, ex uh, on the existing documentation as it is in different libraries because it turns out that uh, sometimes in, I'm not sure whether this is the, this is not the case really, sometimes a documentation in GNU TLS on the issue says a rather different thing and explicitly offers you that, oh, this might be the problem because you have a version one certificate uh, instead of a now commonplace version three certificate, uh, while OpenSSL documentation just talks about the extension and doesn't offer you this uh, usual, this is usually the case uh, directly in the documentation. Uh, furthermore, uh, we, are, we have uh, set up a research booth, uh, many of you might have seen, at the beginning of the e-building, uh, where we are asking the developers uh, what sort of documentation would they like, how long should it be, should it have a dedicated section on the next steps, should it have a dedicated section on uh, what are the security consequences. And uh, there's, that, that's why we created about a 15 minute long questionnaire that's still available. Uh, the link will also be on the last slide. Uh, where the developers are shown different variants of documentation for uh, chosen certificate issues that we've selected. Uh, and they are asked whether they like uh, the first or the second one more, what they would add, what they would omit, what they would reformulate. Apart from the questionnaire and the existing documentation, there may be a cooperation with the Red Hat technical writers team uh, to polish it up in a way that uh, the developers are uh, 
kind of comfortable with so that it's not uh, a couple of us academic guys basically uh, saying, oh, this is a better documentation, but we have it uh, underlined with data from real developers thinking that actually they do want a longer documentation, not just the two-liner, even though that might that would be uh, intuitive to me. I've learned in academia and research that intuitive solutions are not necessarily the right ones, and we should kind of ask uh, the people actually using it to find out. Uh, basically, summarizing the goals of the whole project that we have uh, would be uh, to provide a useful resource for the IT professionals uh, with examples that can be used for testing and uh, for getting a hang of the error, uh, and the documentation. So if something happens to you and you get an error and you don't understand what it is or whether it's severe or not, you have a single nice place that you can look to. And one of the previous researches of ours has shown us that uh, when we try the little heretical thing that the error message in the command line itself said, uh, oh, error at uh, zero depth, something, 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 uh, comma, cx509errors.org for more details. At least to me, surprisingly, three quarters of the developers <coughs> clicked the link that they were given uh, in the command line or in the manual page, uh, which means that if you are the developer of the library and you provide the user with a quick link uh, to a good resource, they at least try whether the resource is good. So uh, there's a huge opportunity to, uh, ki to kind of direct the, the developers to a place where doc good documentation will be to be found. Which basically brings me to the second and the third point. Uh, as said, secondly, uh, we ideally want to create a better documentation because we will ask all sorts of people and all sorts of libraries what they would expect for a particular issue uh, and then include all those things. Uh, and thirdly, we would save the time of the developers of the libraries itself uh, because uh, they would not have to write the documentation for the individual errors. Uh, word of mouth says that developers rarely li like writing documentation and explaining the stuff, so they might actually appreciate the thing. Now, the talk went a little bit uh, faster than we expected. That basically concludes the talk. <laughs> Uh, the project is online on x509errors.org uh, by now, or already for a couple of months, if you're interested. Uh, and the survey that I mentioned that was administered at the booth uh, is, again, still available at survey.fy.muni.cz slash devconf. It will be open uh, till the end of today, uh, till midnight, though if you, managed, uh, if you managed to fill it in in the next about an hour, roughly till four o'clock when the last session starts. We are still at the booth and you will be able to come and claim your reward uh, of the Red Hat and the Faculty of Informatic Merchandise that we are left with, that we, were, we have been giving away for the uh, completed questionnaires. Which still leaves us with a couple of minutes of questions. So general questions or any comments for how should it work better or why won't it work or any feedback is welcome by now. Yes. So I like the idea actually. I think it's this thing can help me very much with one bug which I have. Okay, glad to hear that. Uh, there's definitely, that, that's a good point. Uh, when you use a link as prominently as this, there's definitely a question of who is actually in charge of the website. Uh, so far, uh, as the current situation is, I wouldn't recommend putting the links in there right away because it's us, a couple of students, and the Faculty of Informatics University uh, administering what's there, which is not necessarily a respectable source. Maybe if the, uh, if the libraries and the developers uh, like the idea and the, the sub-project or something like this uh, goes under the wings of Red Hat or whatever other company, it would be a better option. Uh, but as you said, again, phishing is a problem or what, whatever sort of spoofing when you're going for the link. Uh, 
basically telling do avoid uh, the, the certificate validations altogether as 90% uh, of the Stack Overflow posts tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a good point. Uh, that was, uh, I, I mentioned the link because we tried it in the previous experiments two years ago here at DEFCON at the research booth. I was quite curious myself because I kind of expected uh, the command line uh, suited Linux guys not to click on things that are displayed in the command line. And I was rather surprised myself that they gave the link a try. And since they saw in the first case that mm, it sound, seemed useful, uh, they also tried in the, in the latter cases. Though I do perfectly agree with you that I'm not uh, readily available to convince other people to put links everywhere. Though doing interviews with the developers, as we did two years ago, it was interesting to hear that uh, Opinions vary quite a lot. There were developers saying, oh, uh, there should be a YouTube link video in the manual page that would explain it to me, uh, while the developer sitting next, next to him at the same time was like, kidding me, I would never play a video explaining an error to me if it was even if it was linked in the manual page. Uh, so we've heard all sorts of uh, ideas. Thanks for the comment. Any more comments, questions? Yes. So if I get it correctly, you kind of aim at broadening the scope to the TLS connections uh, as itself, not just the certificate validation part. Uh, that could also work. Uh, and of course, if we are going this uh, kind of unifying slash standardizing direction, we could have whatever breadth uh, of the scope we want. Uh, ideal case, let's standardize the whole API for TLS connection across all the libraries. That would be a nice world, though probably unachievable. Uh, we were considering that, though, in the beginning, we, start, we decided to start focusing narrow, more narrow, uh, and then if it turned out viable, if it turned out that the developers liked it, uh, and it made sense, sense to them, maybe then broaden up, uh, because we weren't sure that the proof of concept of this sort, when it was like a year or two ago, uh, would work, and the developers would find it useful, and it would make sense. But still, uh, focusing on the certificate validation sub-world uh, was sort of self-contained. So basically, I do agree that that would totally work, uh, and we just decided not to do it yet, uh, so as not to have a too bigger portion of the pie, so that we would be unable to eat it. Yes? Uh, do you mean during the static analysis of the TLS libraries like OpenSSL GNU TLS or of the client software that uses them? The latter. The latter. Uh, that is also something that we have been considering, though only slightly, because uh, it's a rather different uh, sort of research with the requiring the expertise in the static analysis and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, we may come to that starting from the IPv dataset uh, scan analysis. Uh, if it turns out interesting and there are students interested in that. Basically, since it, it was me in the project for, for quite some time and now it's like uh, three to four of us. Uh, that was not a priority yet. We've been considering that at the beginning, but we thought that this would be a simpler and more viable start. Uh, since we wanted to do something that we can then ask the developers and ideally push upstream, uh, rather than starting a more complex thing uh, with the risk of not getting the changes upstream and not getting the changes used. So basically a similar answer that was to the, to the guy on the left of mine. But definitely thanks for the tip because it works to me as a um, 
signal that something like this might be uh, usable and might be interesting for the developers. With that, I would probably close even the QA section as I'm told that I'm out of time. Thank you all for your uh, time and appreciation. Thank you.